Hello and welcome to a brand new series here on Crusader Kings 2. This will be a tutorial on how to play as a vassal and work your way up to become the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Real quick, this will be using all DLCs. If you see me doing something in this game that you are not able to do because all you have is the free to play base game version, that's okay. There are ways around it. But the two main DLCs that will come and become very important here are the Way of Life, which is this focus button up here, which lets me focus on different aspects. I can be focused on intrigue, which increases plot power, seduction, which makes it more likely to get babies, and I can seduce people and make bastards and such. There, there's a wide variety here, and we'll cover them as we go through them. I do have... Uh, and then there's also the Conclave DLC, which allows you to ch pick an education focus for your child which will start influencing how they gain their skills and what their actual adult um, education skill is in. I've mentioned these two DLCs specifically because if you've seen anything about Crusader Kings 3 you will know that they are really revamping this focus section in CK3 and they are making it a a lot more detailed, a lot more story driven, and a lot more interesting. And but it will be in the base game of Crusader Things 3, which I'm very, very happy to hear about. Alright, so the goal of this is to go from the little count of Luxembourg. We're gonna have to get ourselves a dukedom, which means um Duke Gottfried of Vigreich. Your your dynasty's not gonna be on the throne for too long. Not if I have anything to say about it. All right, as for other news, I am Enigmatic Rose 4. Apologies about my voice right now. I just got back from PDXCon and I caught the cold. Uh, that's going around. I know a couple other people have it. I've seen some chat, some people in chat have it. Uh, I know Essentia, Modica, Quill Quill18's wife caught it, Avac caught it. Lord knows who else got it. it. It's going around. But I wanted to get started on this. And if you would like to see more like this, remember to leave a like, leave, subscribe to the channel, you get more of this. And if you would like to chat with me live, I do stream over on Twitch about six hours a day, five days a week from 10 to 4 Eastern time. Drop in any time. I'm always happy to ask questions or join the Discord. There's a link down below in the description where you can also ask any questions you want, and myself or a lot of other people would be happy to answer them for you. All right, but we're getting started now. You know, only uh, three minutes in, that's not too bad. <laughs> All right, so we are Count Conrad of Luxembourg. We are the Von Luxembourgs, and we would like to achieve glory. We are German, which gives us no special features, which is fine. We are Catholic, which is pre good things if we click on the religious map mode most of the people around us are catholic we're, we're the big catholic little ball over here it would be very bad if we weren't catholic because other people would try to steal our land because we were a heretic or a heathen all right first things first though we have all of our little uh circles up here these notifications they are telling us important things first one tells us that we have important decisions it takes us to the intrigue tab and you notice that these ones are in gold. When these ones are, when the ones marked in gold, which you can mark things as gold is with the, uh, this little circle, this little green button here, then what that means is you'll get a notification up here as soon as they're able to click one of them. We're being notified because we can record, are we, sorry, we can recruit a court physician. Court physician is a minor title here. If we go here, we can also just select someone we do have someone in our court who has 19 learning. He does not have any traits that say he's a physician, but he's, he's very well learned. So sure, we'll make this man, who's also our chancellor, our court physician. One reason you may want to do this is because if you go back to Intrigue and if you click on Recruit Court Physician, which you see is not even available anymore because we have a court physician, it will often cost you money. We don't have a lot of money, y'all. We're kind of poor at this point. As well, this one we have is ruler married. We have no wife. Now, 
getting married is an interesting thing in this game. You can marry for a variety of reasons. You can just marry anyone who's fertile. You look at someone who's at least 16 years old. Like, look at this lovely lady. She's lustful. She's 16. That's lustful is plus 20% fertility. You marry her, she's going to make you babies. You hope. Uh, the There are education traits that affect fertility as well. Like, if you're a mastermind theologian, it's fertility minus 5. If someone is a fortune builder, it's plus 10%. Uh, charismatic negotiator, plus 5%. This is the diplomacy education, and this is the stewardship education. The higher the stewardship education, the higher the diplomacy education, the more fertility. Intrigue educations don't give any fertility. Oh, there we go. It's like great eminence is plus 10%. So you can marry for fertility because you just need babies, and you need lots of babies. And if you don't have babies, your family's going to die out. So that's one reason you can marry. Another reason you can marry is that you want someone with a special trait, a genetic trait. You see this little purple heart that's a stutter? That means it's a genetic or a congenital trait that could be passed on to your children. The purple heart is bad. If you find someone with a green heart, that's good. There appears to be no one in here. There is a, a hair lip. So if you want to play the Von Hasburgs and breed in hair lips, you can do that. If I come down here to find characters, I will just do a search all genius. There we go. This is probably the best one, a genius. That is a congenital trait that can be passed on to children. So if you marry someone that's genius, there's a good chance your own children will be genius. Uh, genius. If you're a genius and your wife is a genius, then there's an even better chance. Though you can still have a random genius without having a parent. So like this lovely lady, she's a genius. You could probably marry her, yep. You would lose prestige because she is not from a great house. She's just some random lady in this guy's court. But you have the chance for a genius. So if you want to marry for eugenics and um, congenital traits, that'd be a good deal. Good deal, a good deal, apologies. All right, that's one thing, but when you are playing as a vassal, one of the most important things you can marry for is for land. We have a slight problem up here and where we are is because you see all these um, provinces that have the gray lines. These are all owned by bishopric dudes, meaning we cannot marry to try and get claims on their land. We're going to have to take their land the hard way if we do. Because, you know, religious guys own the land. When one of them dies, someone else from the religious order gets put in charge. It makes it a little difficult. Hmm? But we do have King Gottfried here. And he's got three daughters who are all married to somebody. Which is annoying. Doesn't help us. Though I suppose we could try and kill this man and take his wife. But there's no guarantee of that. We can also see that he has a son, an heir, who has no child. He is a hunchback. That's not a good congenital trait at all. Attraction opinion, which means that either gay men or women will do not like him very much. So we don't have much hope of marrying into our Duke's family. And if we click on him, you see the gold highlight here. That's all the land he owns. So what's more, or what's more important at this point is for us to possibly gather our strength inside of this duchy. Uh, do not expect us to look around the map a lot while we're playing this game right now, because we are very tightly focused on the duchy of Lower Lorraine. When we go take a look, again, we're going to click on the government map mode, which you can hotkey and hit H. And there's no point in us clicking on any of these three, Liege, Con, or Treyer, or Sticked, or Overgissel. But if we click on some of our other accounts, we've got Galer. He's got no one we can marry. He's got a little son who's 11. Cool kid. That's owned directly by the Duke, so that doesn't help us. We have Loon. And he has a daughter, but she's married to a Duke and already has two kids. She's married to a duke all the way over here in Hungary. Doesn't help us. We have Brabant. Oh, 
Oh, he has a two-year-old. If we wanted to wait 14 years for a kid, we could possibly marry her. We do have a countess here. And she has a regular marriage. She also has a daughter who is eight. That wouldn't be too bad. We would have to commit murder on her children. Or use a claim. Oh, because she's married... Oh, she's married to nobody. But he's a baron over in France. The gold brown circle here means he's a baron. He's a baron under from France. Interesting. Other choices. We've got this man. He's got two sons. Not the best. And we have this man who has one son. So we don't have a lot of good options right now. I think we're going to just get married for... Someone who would give us an alliance. So that's another reason to get married. Again, there's no one in this land that we could marry for an alliance or for land. Because not, life does not always give you what you want. So we take a look. It puts them in order of importance. There is someone who is in Venice. If we see this little sword here, it says that she would result in a non-aggression pact with the Serene Doge of Venice. Because her father is the Doge of Venice. He's 58. We would get a non-aggression pact. We could upgrade to an alliance. That's not the best. Because if we look here, here is Venice. It's not in the HRE. And that means if we got into war with someone inside the HRE, he could not join us. We could go and look at direct vassals. And we see that these large shields, these are dukes. But there's like a count over here. He's a bishopric, sadly. He's on his own. There's the Duke Ver Dirk of West Francia, who's in the HRE. He's got a bunch of sisters, including ones the heir to the duchy. Because there's only one, or there's only... Excuse me? Signatic, Cognatic, Gavel kind, but he has a brother. Oh, his brother has a different father. You see that? That's why there's two. So the mother has had many, has had two sons, but the Duke only had one son. So, you know what? This would be pretty good. If we tried to marry Adela here, let's see if we can arrange a betrothal with ourselves. He says no. Would prefer a matrilineal marriage because she is the heir. That's painful. We can't do too much about that. We can try for the next child down. She's got terrible congenital traits, but sometimes you just gotta live with that. Nope, still prefers a matrilineal marriage. Still prefers a matrilineal marriage. If we waited long enough until he was 16 and we could buy a favor off of him, we could force him to give a her. But I don't think that's going to happen this time. Don't think we're going to find much luck with anybody. Oh, she's betrothed to the King of Hungary. Good for her. She is not, but she is celibate. Minus 1,000% fertility. You know she does... Yeah. You could try to marry her. But uh, it wouldn't go so well even if you did allow it. And of course you can search for characters inside the realm using the character finder, but sometimes I find I prefer clicking around and just seeing who's in the same area as us. Oh, this might not be too bad of a man. But I think we're just going to marry for traits. Let's see what we can do. So we had that... No, she wasn't searchable through here. She was searchable through fine characters. So if you click this, sometimes you'll, you won't find every woman that you can marry. We do have this Irish 16-year-old genius, and we could sort this a little better by just saying, only women. And uh, then we can sort by age. We have a 16-year-old, another 16-year-old. Irish, Russian, we have he's Shia. We would not be allowed to wear Shia. Also, she is out of diplomatic range, so we could also 
final foot is down by saying yes to diplomatic range. We have the choice. We have an Irish lady who's 16. And we have another Irish lady who's 35. I think we'll marry the 16-year-old. Though the 35-year-old if you know, is actually already married. So, again, you could sort it by married. No. We've got one lady. Hello. You will cost me a lot of prestige, but I would like your trait. So we're going to marry for that. Because our current ruler, King Conrad, or Count Conrad, I wish we were a king. He is kind of meh. Nothing is above 10. Intrigue's the highest, which is actually pretty good. And he has a daughter. We're going to actually have her focused on thrift. I do have a video that explains the childhood focuses. But we're going to focus on thrift because thrift gives us fussy or curious, potentially. And both of those give great stats that are potentially good for going with the intrigue focus. And if for some reason we do die and we do without a son and we do play as a Mechbechthild here, she, it will be very handy if she has intrigue focus. Intrigue is probably one of the most useful things as a vassal. Alright, so next up we're bringing on the ruler married. We have to pick an ambition. We can create a treasury, make a friend, acquire a title, become a counselor, build a war chest, or groom an heir. And we're going to go for groom an heir so we get more children. We also do have the problem of the fact that our inheritance is currently gavelkind, but we'll touch on that later. We have to pick a character focus. I do believe we will go with seduction for that little bit of intrigue, that fertility. Don't know if we'll seduce anyone yet, but it's still not bad. Designated regent. We'll wait until we get a wife and then we'll make her a designated regent. We also have commanders down here. They're pretty terrible, but they're the best we got. So. Oh, that's another thing. We do have a half-brother. We could marry a half-brother to a princess of England. Doesn't do us too much. Or we could marry him to her for her stats. She's lustful. You know, Roka, why don't you marry my brother? Let's spread the dynasty out a little bit, because if we look here at our shield, we have six living members. It's not a lot. And see, one of them's a bishop. That would be, wait, we have three, we have four. Who else is alive? Not through the ladies. Oh, we have this guy. We have oh, our spy master is our cousin. Why don't you get married? Hey, this Welsh woman. There's our four, five. Who else is alive in here? You can tell by the shields here that they are now parts of different families. He had a daughter. We have a cousin who's a baroness. She's married, regular marriage to somebody, so she's, you know, her children are going to be outside the family. The new shield. Okay, that's fine. Alright, now we're going to hit the space bar to unpause. We're on speed one. Playing on speed one, it can get very boring. Unless you're in the middle of battles. Oh, there we go. Our cousin's getting married. Uh, we're probably going to speed up to speed three. Alright, our half-brother has gotten married. And we are getting married, so we can either get gold or prestige. We lost a lot of prestige, which is now negative. This affects how other people like us. If we go and like, look over how about our brother. Actually, it doesn't... Sorry, it doesn't matter with our brother. It matters with our vassals. Well, short reign. And there's no negative. But if we had positive prestige, he would like us more. So we're going to take a little bit of prestige just to help that go a little better, faster. And now we have a wife. Out of curiosity, while we're sitting here waiting, let's see. Uh, when you do marry a daughter who's your heir or in direct line for your throne, you would like to hit matrilineal marriage. Ooh, there is a legitimized bastard. Oh, oh, we are starting to fancy our cousin's wife. Yes, make a move. Go to her chamber. We'll potentially get her pregnant if, you know, 
If he thinks it's hers, it's part of the family. If he thinks, if he realizes she's cheating on him, well, we have a bastard. It's good to be the Counts. Indeed it is. And now that we have started, I think it's a good time to end this. Uh, something I did not touch on in the beginning was that we did start with the 1066 start date in December. Which means that William the Conqueror was already on the throne. I did that because it's a little more stable and we don't get really weird stuff in England right away. Alright, so if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. And remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. And I'll see y'all in the next video.